Well, hey, everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to today's show. Now, researchers from the University of Florida report in a new study that the mosquito, Aedes scapularis, is now established in mainland Florida, down in Broward and Miami-Dade counties. So how did it arrive in the U.S.? And what is the public health significance of it? Well, joining me today to answer these questions and more is Lawrence Reeves, Ph.D. Dr. Reeves is an entomologist and research assistant scientist at the Florida Medical Entomology Laboratory. Dr. Reeves, welcome to the show, sir. Hi, nice to be here. Um, let's go ahead and start with a little background on Aedes scapularis. Uh, where is it normally found and how widespread is its distribution? So Aedes scapularis is a neotropical mosquito. Uh, that means that they are found uh, in, in both the Americas, North and South America, going from about the Rio Grande Valley of southern Texas all the way down south into central Argentina. Uh, they are also on some of the Caribbean islands, uh, but not all of them. And to date, we have not we have not seen them at least widespread in Florida and the eastern United States. Very good. And is it a known vector of infectious diseases? Yeah. So it, we, we ha it hasn't been linked as or it hasn't really been kind of um, uh, identified as kind of a primary vector. Like you think of um, uh, something like 80, 80s aegypti um, as kind of a primary vector for a dengue or Zika virus. Um, Aedes scapularis hasn't so much been found to be a primary vector for any particular pathogens, but it has been found infected with a very wide range of pathogens. So most notably, uh, these include yellow fever virus, uh, Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus, um, and the closest the closest has come to being kind of identified as a primary vector has been for uh, the parasite that causes dog dog heartworm, uh, Dirofilaria imidis, mm -hmm. which is something that's also here in Florida. So, uh, so it's a little bit worrisome that we're finding them now here in the state because they have had this kind of, um, they have been found with this just wide range of pathogens uh, infecting them in, in natural populations in South America. So, so you report in the paper that it's now established in South Florida, but has it been seen in the state prior to that? Yeah, so, so these are, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting question. So um, back, in, back in 1945, uh, three individual larvae were collected in the mid-Florida Keys, uh, specifically uh, an island called Vaca Key. So that so these are historic records. Uh, since 1945, we have not seen any specimens of Aedes scapularis in the state. Uh, interestingly, when these when these initial specimens were were uh, were collected, they were at first identified as a closely related species, Aedes euplocomus, and later revised to Aedes scapularis. Uh, we, we weren't able to track down these specimens, so we, we couldn't take a look at them ourselves. Uh, but it, it's it's uh, I'm very interested to learn more about about these particular specimens. Yeah. Um, so could we go ahead and talk a little bit about your work? Uh, that you were doing that led to this discovery of this non-native species becoming established in South Florida? Well, so uh, South Florida has become a bit of a hotbed for some of these non-native uh, mosquito species. At one particular site, we've now found three three new non-native mosquito species. So we've kind of, we've been working there and branching out a little bit more to kind of try to identify how widespread some of these non-native species are. And so th these species are of lesser uh, relevance to public health. Uh, these are going to be Culex panicosa and Adiomaya uh, squama penis, and another one that we haven't we haven't uh, put out there yet. Uh, but so, in an effort to kind of recognize how widespread these mosquitoes are in southern Florida, we've kind of been branching out from the sites where we've been seeing them uh, and looking kind of beyond that. Uh, we've also been pushing to put together a good uh, reference database uh, for the DNA barcoding uh, cytochrome C oxidase sub subunit 1 sequences for Florida mosquitoes. So we've kind of been collecting for both those purposes. Uh, and in the process of collecting uh, down there, we, we uncovered a few kind of odd looking mosquitoes that um, uh, raised our attention. Um, and indeed, they did turn out to be something new, AD scapularis. Uh, when I took undergraduate entomology back in the 80s, I'm giving away my age, um, 
when you would identify an insect like a mosquito, you would stick it on a pin and look at it under a stereoscope. What techniques did you use and you and your team use to identify Aedes scapularis? Well, so uh, to, to be honest, we, we may have missed this if, uh, if it weren't for the presence of another non-native species, Aedes condolescens down there. Uh, so Aedes condolescens looks very similar to Aedes scapularis. They both have this like big patch of uh, white scales on the thorax. Um, and But there are characters that kind of distinguish those two species. So uh, knowing that Aedes condolescens was down there, we found another one that was similar to that with that big patch of scales, but uh, but different. And that kind of that that's what re really drew our attention to this. Um, uh, we were expecting to only see one species that looked like this down there, but there were two. Uh, so following looking at that, we um, uh, we used DNA barcoding to be sure that it was Aedes scapular. So we had a good we had a good idea based on what it looked like. Uh, based on the morphology, that it would be Aedes scapularis, and the DNA barcoding confirmed that. So, and, and you've established that the mosquitoes established in South Florida, specifically Broward and Miami-Dade. Um, is there concern of this spreading throughout the peninsula? Yeah, there is. So, so one of the things that we've been working on more recently is to kind of use, is to use niche modeling to try to identify what parts of the state uh, this mosquito is likely to um, it, what parts of the state are likely to support this mosquito and to be suitable for, for this mosquito species. Uh, one, one other quick thing to mention ba uh, about Broward and Miami-Dade counties. Um, so after we found this mosquitoes, uh, after we found these mosquitoes in um, South Florida, we started talking with the local mosquito control districts, Miami-Dade Mosquito Control and uh, Broward Mosquito Control. And uh, talking with them, they had also been finding these mosquitoes uh, in Broward with specimens dating back to 2006 um, uh, and a few a little bit later in 2013. Okay, I, I want to go ahead and revert back to the questions I said in the intro, which I, I think are two of the more pertinent questions, and that's um, how did this invasive mosquito end up in Florida? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that, that, that's kind of an open question. Um, so uh, this particular mosquito is is kind of loosely what we would consider a floodwater mosquito. So uh, unlike things like some of the Culex species, they are not laying their eggs directly onto the water. They are laying their eggs in kind of the soil or damp, uh, uh, wet mud uh, in places where they expect water to ultimately be in the future, right? Uh, and so these eggs are resistant to, to desiccation. So uh, their eggs can dry out. One, one of the best ideas that we have, uh, we, we'll likely never know how this mosquito arrived, but one of the best ideas that we have is that it may have hitchhiked in, for example, things like potted plants or any other importations of soil um, um, into Southern Florida. Uh, so this is kind of converse to what we expect with some of these other mosquitoes like Aedes aegypti and Aedes alvopictus that lay their eggs in, in for example, used tires. Um, and again, those eggs also are res resistant to desiccation, so they can travel very well. Uh, but in this case, we, we guess that it, or one possibility is that it was moved in uh, through via eggs that were in soil that were imported to the state. Okay. And, and the last significant question is, um, what is the public health significance of this finding? Yeah, so we don't, we we also uh, that's still that's also yeah. an open question. Um, so uh, yellow fever virus, of course, is not circulating here in Florida, um, but uh, there is a strain of the Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus, uh, one of the one of the viruses, um, Aedes scapularis can vector elsewhere in the world. Uh, the strain that we have here in Florida is called Everglades virus, and this virus is kind of circulating. Uh, um, so it, it's transmitted by a mosquito, uh, the mosquito Culex CDCI, interestingly named after the CDC. Uh, so this is down in South Florida. Uh, Culex CDCI moves it around among uh, rodents, um, and occasionally it spills over into into humans. Um, so we don't know if Aedes scapularis is going to be is going to be um, competent as a vector for that virus, but if it is it could lead to this virus moving from uh, these kind of natural wild areas where this virus is into more uh, suburban or even urban areas uh, like areas that where, where, where we're finding Aedes scapularis. 
Right. It also there are also implications for sorry uh, there are also implications for dog heartworm uh, di diarrhea imidis uh, because uh, Aedes scapulars can be a very efficient vector for that. All right, um, let me just close with this. I, I want to open the floor for any final thoughts that you might have about your research, about your findings, anything that I missed asking you about. Oh yeah, so. Um, it, as I mentioned, uh, Florida is a bit of a hotbed for some of these non-native mosquito species, uh, and it seems like we're seeing an uptick in the frequency with which we're, with, with, at least with which we're detecting these things. Uh, so we've got about 16 non-native mosquito species here in Florida. Um, Two-thirds of those have shown up in Florida after, or at least they've been detected uh, after the year 2000. So in the last 20 years, the vast majority of the, um, the non-native mosquitoes in Florida have been found. Uh, whether that's linked to climate or transportation or trade trends, we, we don't know, but it does seem like we're seeing many more of these mosquitoes coming in. Uh, so it is a little bit uh, worrisome that we're seeing so many new species arriving here in the state, uh, particularly from the neotropics uh, in the Caribbean. All right. Well, I I'll go ahead and link to the study. It's from the Journal of Medical Entomology, and it'll be in the show notes for uh, listeners or viewers. Uh, they want to take a look at it. It's pretty interesting. And I want to thank you, Dr. Lawrence Reeves, for sharing your time and your expertise. I appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me.